Salut tout le monde! Welcome back to Unintentionally Frenchified. If I ask you what the best thing about France is, would you say the food? Because I do. One of my favorite things about living in France is the buttery, ooey, incredible gooeyness of French bread, of French pastries, of French cheese, of just French cuisine in general. Mwah! It is so good. However, we do know that customer service in France is not their strong point. So eating out in a restaurant is not always the most pleasant experience in France. But have no fear, today's video is going to help you out with that because I'm gonna to talk to you about the 10 things you absolutely should not do when eating out in a restaurant in France. I'm hoping this video will save you the shame of being reprimanded in public by our French friends. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, you know what to do right now. Also, absolutely leave your comments below about the do's and don'ts that you wanna share with everyone for eating out in French restaurants. And let's otherwise dive right in. Say parti. I often remind people in my videos a very important don't, which is don't expect everybody to speak English. I feel the need to remind these to the English speakers out there in my tips videos because English speakers are lucky in the sense that English is the dominant business language and English is often the dominant travel language. And so English speakers really often don't make the effort to learn another language, especially when it's just for travel and even when it's for living somewhere. This is a huge no, no, don't, 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 especially in France. When it comes to customer service, you get a lot more, you know, France isn't strong, but you get a lot more in customer service when you make the effort to speak their language. If you're planning to travel to France this year in say October or November, October is my favorite, favorite time of the year to visit France, then the Lingoda Sprint Challenge could be a really, really great opportunity for you. What's really unique about Lingoda, if you're looking for a way to learn a new language, is the fact that their method really focuses on the maximum amount of human interaction and the maximum amount Amount of conversation. Lingoda is an online language learning platform, so they have classes 24 7, very flexible. You can take classes whenever you want as long as you have an internet connection. And the majority of classes have a maximum of five students per class, but often you see more three or four students in the class along with your native speaking language teacher. I find this part of Lingoda to be the most helpful because you get so much personalized feedback and so much talking time when you're in a Lingoda class. And the thing is, is that's the part of, you know, learning another language that's so difficult. When I go into a restaurant when I first got to France and, you know, there's a bunch of people sitting around, everybody looks up when you walk in, the waiter's standing right there and you have to start talking to them. It's the moment where you're just, you're uncomfortable. It's intimidating, right? It can be super intimidating. The sprint challenge at Lingoda Goda is a challenge that's starting this month where you sign up for either 15 classes a month for two months or 30 classes a month for two months. When you commit to taking a specific amount of classes per month for those two months, then Lingoda on their end commits to reimbursing you either 50% of the fees or 100% of the fees for the entire sprint challenge. It's such a great motivation to stick with your classes, knowing that when you keep up your end of the deal, so does Lingoda, and it really takes you from speaking nothing or very little to feeling super comfortable having basic restaurant conversations, speaking with natives in the street, talking to people, you know, in different tourist attractions, you actually can speak another language after that two months. I'm putting all the information about Lingoda, the Sprint, in the YouTube description below. I also have a really great discount code. It gets you 20 euros off or $25 off the sign up fee, so don't forget to use that as well. Some key facts to keep in mind if you're kind of hesitating is Lingoda has had over 100,000 students in 2021, all learning four different languages, French, English, Spanish, German, and they have over 1,500 native language speaking teachers ready to take you from zero to hero in two months. Do not show up for a French 
meal outside of French mealtime hours, you will unfortunately be met with a closed sign and a locked door. Lunch in France is usually between 12 and 2 p.m. and then dinner starts at the very earliest 7 p.m. but it's more likely to be 7 30 8 p.m. Big cities will of course cater to tourists so you'll have brasseries that are open all day long but restaurants will absolutely be closed between lunch and dinner. If you are someone that's hungry early you can either go and have say an apero before dinner so you can go find a cafe you can sit down you can order something to drink you'll probably have like planche with charcuterie or or cheese that you can have or you can take part in the very French tradition of a goûter at 4 p.m. So you have your lunch at say around 12.30 and then you'll have a little sweet, it's not savory in France, it's usually a sweet little snack around 4 p.m. that tides you over until 7.30 or 8. Okay, so when you've been seated and you say bonjour, because of course you're using your lingoda and you're using your French language here, you might be wondering where to put your hands. In the US, the polite place to be would be to put your hands on your lap, but no 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 stop this in France it is not considered polite to have your hands in your lap why you ask because from what I've understood apparently when your hands are in your lap and underneath the table no one else can see them so nobody knows what you're doing so if you think I'm thinking a bit of the scene from wedding crashers at the dinner table apparently when you can't see your hands it means they could be up to no good so Hands will have to be on the tables, but of course, no elbows. This is very similar to the US. Elbows are considered pas poli. So we won't put our elbows, but we will make sure that you can see our hands. You'll probably see bread on the table and no bread plate, but don't put your bread onto the plate that you have for your meal. I know what the French do not have bread plates okay they don't believe in bread plates your bread goes directly on the table crumbs and all when you want to take a big hunk out of it place it back on the table this is 100% normal the only time that I've ever seen a bread plate before in France is fine dining this is very different set of do and don'ts rules so I won't go into it but for the most part there is no bread plate in France on top of there being no bread plate what might surprise you is there is also no butter so you're not going to sit down at the table and have like a basket of bread and butter like you might find in other countries. You'll just have bread on the table. To be fair, even if this might surprise you, the bread is so good in France that it doesn't really need butter. And the only times that I do regularly see bread and butter at the same time is when you take like a planche of charcuterie or fromage, like when you've got the cheese or you know the meat you might sometimes have pickles and then you also have a bit of butter but otherwise I don't ever see people spreading butter onto bread when it comes time to order your drink don't order anything that's not water or wine because the French just won't serve you no I'm kidding <laughs> they will totally bring you a coke or whatever you ask that's on the menu but if you want to have the real French experience you won't really be drinking anything but water or wine during your meal there is a moment pre-meal where the waiter might ask you for, say, an aperitif. He'll ask, do you want, an, do you want a drink, an aperitif to start out? And this is normally like um, an alcohol, like a sherry or a pastis or maybe champagne. Or the French have a specific drink called a kir, where they mix white wine with a bit of syrup. And this you would have before your meal. But during the meal, the French really just have water or wine. And it's quite normal to have a glass of wine during lunch or during dinner. They just see sugary drinks like a Coke for example as being more of a treat like it's not something you would hydrate yourself during a meal it's something that you might have as like you know a goûte a snack when you sit down at a cafe at like four in the afternoon other tip when you're ordering your water or your wine is that water you can ask for a carafe d'eau if you drink tap water, the tap water in France is great. You don't have to pay bottled water. I always ask for a carafe d'eau when I sit down. And something really great about wine in France is it is considerably cheaper than in the US. Wine is actually cheaper than a Coke. You know, a glass of wine is cheaper than a glass of Coke in most French restaurants. So it's not a bad thing to say no to anything that is not wine or water. If you are ordering a salad, don't ask for a specific salad dressing. You know that 1000 Island dressing, I think it's called, or the French dressing that we have in the US? 
No, no, no. You're gonna get whatever salad dressing the chef thinks should be going onto your salad. And sometimes that can be something fun, depending on if like the salad is your whole meal. If it's a side salad though, like a normal basic side salad, you're going to be getting a salad dressing that is a mix of olive oil, a bit of balsamic vinegar, like a pinch of salt and pepper, and a dash of mustard. Like that is the typical base of a salad dressing in France. So they don't have like five different types of ranch stocked back in the kitchen ready for you when you come in. I thought this was kind of hard when I first got to France. I found it to be really plain and now I love it. It is really just the base salad dressing, dressing that you put on vegetables, dressing you put anywhere in France. Okay, so I am a huge lover of pizza. If you guys didn't know, it's an obsession of mine. I eat pizza like twice a week for sure. I just love it. Do not, if you order pizza in a restaurant in France, eat it with your hands. The French eat pizza in what my husband would say is a civilized manner with their fork and knife. They cut their pizza. I know, I know. If you come from a place where you eat pizza with your hands, this can be a bit shocking. But to be fair to France, often the pizza, the crust is so thin that it's kind of like floppy. It's quite hard to eat with your hands. Unless you're someone that likes to fold your pizza, which I hate doing, that's not my thing. Your ingredients will just fall off anywhere anyways, and the crust isn't thick. It's very easy to cut. I mean, I understand why they do it, even if it wouldn't be my first choice. If you happen to be served full blocks of cheese on a cutting board in a restaurant, do not cut the cheese yourself. Don't go first. You can cut it yourself, but let somebody else go first. I would totally not blame you. It is very intense the way that you're supposed to cut cheese in France, and it is a major faux pas, I've done this before, when you cut the cheese the wrong way. Because basically you're supposed to cut the cheese in a way that the person who has the last slice of cheese doesn't end up with only the croute, which is like only the part of the cheese, the end of the block that nobody eats, right? And the cheese in France comes in so many different shapes, like so many different shapes, so many different sizes that you really have to know exactly how you're supposed to cut the cheese in order to do it properly. This is a lot of pressure when you're eating out. So I'm not gonna go into the different ways in this video of to cut cheese, but I feel like I should do an entire video on this, but I did put in the YouTube description a link that will help you if you're interested in learning more, but just seriously, don't cut the cheese first. Let the waiter cut it or let someone else at your table that knows how to cut the cheese and then follow exactly the way that they've cut their cheese. Do not, do not leave your food at the restaurant if you want to take leftover food home. Portion sizes in France are very appropriate, so it's normal to usually finish your entire meal at the restaurant. It's not like in the US where probably 95% of people are taking home leftover food in doggy bags. However, doggy bags didn't used to exist very often in France. It wasn't something that, you know, they had ready for people to take food away. But there's a new law that passed a while while ago in France and so now restaurants have to have doggy bags plus with COVID a lot more restaurants at least in Paris are doing takeaway so they really are equipped to throw the leftover food in a little box for you so that you can take it home so if you have amazing leftover food from a dinner do not shy away from asking for it to go back and taking that home absolutely do not let anyone take your credit card and go to a place where you can't see them and pay for your meal I know that this is how we do it in the US, but in France, they do not do this. There is no risk that someone's in the back sliding your card through the machine and also writing down your card details at the same time so they can steal stuff from you. You will always be with your card. Sometimes you pay at the table and they come with the card machine, and sometimes there's someone standing behind a register and you go and pay. But again, you put your card into the machine, you put your code or you sign your card, and you see your credit card the entire time. Okay? Do not ever give anyone in France for whatever reason when you're traveling a card where you can't see what they're doing with it. Don't leave a tip because you feel like you have to. Leave a tip because you want to. This is not at all the US where we have this big culture of 20% tipping and also this culture of restaurant owners not actually paying people a livable wage to be a waitress or a waiter. And so then you have to compensate that with quite a large tip. That's not how it works in France. Now, I don't wanna give you the idea that servers in France are making so much money that you don't need to tip them. That's not the case. But it's not something that you have to do every time. It's not expected every time. When I have great customer service in France, 
because it doesn't happen that often, I absolutely tip. But I'm not tipping 20%. Like even if I throw five euros or four euros in or something, depending on the price of the bill, of course, this is already seen as generous, okay? So don't tip because you feel like you have to. You tip because you want to. All right, guys, that is it. All the don'ts for when you're eating out in a restaurant in France. Leave in the comments below the do's and don'ts that you think I've left out of this video that you can share with everybody. Don't forget about Lingoda. I've got everything in the YouTube description below about the sprint and I also have the discount code for the 20 years off and $25 off the sign up fee so go check that out enjoy your summer enjoy August I will see you la semaine prochaine bisous